Everyone loves a derby day, don't they? No matter where you are, the same feelings unite fan bases and people together. From the pre-match nerves you get on the day to the pure passion come kickoff. And the We Love Sport app brings fans of teams and sport together, highlighting the best places to watch your team battle it out against your fierce rivals, as well as a haven of sporting action. Make sure you download the We Love Sport app via the link in the podcast description or simply search We Love Sport on your preferred app store and get in on the action now. Because this is the Merseyside Derby and this is Derby Days. So Gareth from the Anfield Wrap, nice to have you back, mate. Thank and you. Gary from across the park, good to see you. Good to be here. So you guys have been chatting away before the show started. <laughs> is it really the friendly derby? <laughs> I mean, we've got on all right. Oh, <laughs> no, I mean, look, we, we've all got we've all got mates from across the park to to use uh, the, the name of, of Gary's show there, and um, you know, we grow. Uh, one of my best mates is a blue nose. I I gave a speech at his wedding, and I made sure it was all about not winning anything since 1995. <laughs> and then I said, "What did you expect if you ask a red to do it? Look, it, it, it's not friendly at times. There there, is, there are people that take it over the edge on both sides. I think." I think in terms of what happens on the pitch, uh, there's there's no fixture that's had more red cards over the years, so that tells you about uh, something about that as well. Albeit that 14 of 21 at Everton, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but look, there's loads of good stuff that's gone on between the clubs that um, I, I think is worthy of note. So you know, Everton have always been for me absolutely brilliant about Hillsborough, um, and the other side rounds. I remember when Reese Jones was killed, the Evertonian. Yeah. You know, and we, we played Zed cars at Anfield and, and, you know, it really went down well with the family, with Everton, with Evertonians. And look, there, there is some bitterness, there is an edge. People would say, I've played a part in some of that and some of the stuff <laughs> I've said over the years. But I think ultimately, you know, we can put it to one side and we can all have a pint at, at the end of the day. I like to think that anyway. I think some of the friendly derby thing was overplayed anyway. I mean, it, it comes from a time in the 80s when we, as a, a city, were railing against what the government was doing to yeah. the city and things like that. Two tribes. So, yeah, that type of stuff. So, you know, that's where it came from. So was it ever truly friendly or was it just scouts coming together, giving a bit of a two fingers to, to, to the South because the mm. South was perceived as a bit of an enemy? Um, I don't know, but it, it's all right. <laughs> the thing is, I think Liverpool's a pretty, it's a pretty unique city in that sense. And obviously you get other two club cities. I mean, you've got Sheffield, Manchester, whatever it might be. But particularly with the proximity, right across Stanley Park, of the two grounds, I mean, that makes it kind of special, right? Yeah, incredibly close. And, you know, as Gareth was just saying then, you've got so many friends, so many members of your family that are, that are either red or blue. And, you know, whether it's on a Sunday when you come together and have a roast dinner, which, we, which you do a lot in Liverpool, and you have a little bit of banter then, or whether it's after the game in the pub or, or, or even, you know, the night before in the pub. I think the... The friendly derby comes from the fact that, you know, most fans, apart from maybe 30,000 of theirs on a match day, are scousers. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, we, we, go, we go to the game. We all, you know, we all go to the game on a Saturday or, you know, they'll go on the opposite Saturday. A lot of us will go home and away as well. So the, the, there's always that chat, uh, whether it's in work on Monday or, like I say, round, round the table on a Sunday. But ultimately, you know, we, we've all got the same um, same values. I think that's, that's a big point and that goes back, obviously, to the 80s, that togetherness and... And the fact that we do feel in it together on a, on a lot of levels, and we've always backed each other when it's come to off the off the field stuff. Mm. But you know, don't get me wrong. When it comes to the derby, uh, derby day, and that starts as soon as you wake up in the morning, the texts start going round. You know, Twitter goes mad, WhatsApp goes mad, and all that. It, it starts from there, and and then you know, the minute the the whistle whistles blown, that's when the banter kicks off. But, yeah, um, you, you want uh, both sides want to beat the other at, at everything both. as well. Do you know what I mean? So it's not just you know, when you face each other in a derby, it's absolutely everything. And that's gone, that's always been the case. I, I can remember in school arguing with Evertonians and having Evertonians say to me, yeah, well, we've got a scoreboard or, you know, because we didn't used to have one. And then it'd be like, you know, well, our kit's better or these boots are better or, you know, whatever it might be. There was always a reason to go at each other to say something was better or, or, or whatever, or what have you. I mean, you know, he's got us digging there about, you know, us being a, a bigger club with fans all over the world. <laughs> um, you know, they, they don't like to talk about their dirty secrets of, 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 of all the, uh, the coaches from Wales on a match day, but, you know... <laughs> But, but we can both go on and do that all day, and that that's fine. No, that that you know, for me, there should be an edge to it. There should be, you should you should have this backwards and forwards, and it's just knowing where the line is. So hang on, there was no scoreboard at Anfield. Not then used to what be. What did not. you do? So you have to ask the person sitting next to you. If you, you say you're, you're not, getting I mean, do you not know how many goals your team scores? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I, I turned up at White Hart Lane when Jermaine Defoe had already scored a hat trick against Charlton. So 35 minutes gone. So I mean, sometimes sometimes you don't know. 
And like you, you might miss it if you go to the loo or get a pint or whatever. So what did you have to do? Just go, like, what's, what's the score again? Score. The, he's always had a clock, didn't you? He had a clock, yeah. <laughs> but we just, you, you just know, or you just ask the person next year. I mean, this is going back a long time. <laughs> yeah. We've had a scoreboard for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary, what's it like, obviously, Rafa Benitez, he's a man associated with Liverpool, that famous night in Istanbul in 2005. You used to see him in your dugout, yeah? No, um, and I, I don't think I ever think about it, you know, from, from that perspective. Every time I look at him, I, I would feel the same. Um, it, it, it's a mad one, it is. You know, I, I can still remember, I'm not going to talk about that night because that, 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 that's taking the podcast in the wrong direction. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, I st- obviously I have memories of, of how successful he was at Liverpool. And look, I'd like to think I'm a, I'm a pragmatist and, and my main objective as an Everton fan is for Everton to be successful. And, you know, when we went out looking for a manager... Unfortunately, there wasn't many better candidates out there than him, and that, that's the way that I look at it, and that's where I've got to look at it. You know, and I'd urge all fans to, to be the same until the minute that he w- either walks out the door or he's sacked, or whenever that happens, we've just got to get behind him. But oh, it's, it's only wrong, it's a tough one. It's a tough one, particularly when the, the Reds do bring it up, all the things he's done for them, and, and obviously at the moment we're not sitting particularly pretty, so it makes it, makes it worse. And, you know, is he a double agent? We don't know yet. Um, <laughs> hopefully not. But um, yeah, it's from my perspective, I, I just think he he was the best man for the job at the time, and hopefully, hopefully he is. I mean, the thing about Rafa has always been the style of football. Is that something that you're kind of dealing with now? Um, I think it's a consequence of the players he's got at his disposal. I don't think he's got much of a choice. Um, you know, the word is apparently that that's, that's not the way that he, he wants to play. And, you know, he's, he's trying to seek players in, in the windows to try and make us a more progressive team to play higher up the pitch. I mean, he didn't have much to spend in the last window, but he didn't go and play by two centre-backs or two defensive players. He bought two attacking players with the funds, limited funds that he has available. So, you know, I'd like to think that, you know, he, he's going to take us forwards in a more positive manner and in the, in the way that the Everton fans want to play. I mean, he's gone on, gone on a lot about him believing that he knows what the fans want and there's no doubt what what our fans want we want aggressive attacking football well as much attacking we want we want to be in you know be in teams faces you look at that success we had in the 80s which was the last time being honest that we were success successful it was you know it was getting the ball wide it was getting men in the box it was getting about teams it was you know it was putting you know it was putting it to the opposition and i, I think he knows what the fans want i think he knows what the club is about yeah, yeah. Just from you know the experience he has across the park, he, you know he was involved himself in some derby matches where we were, you know we did get the upper hands, and it always was, you know when we'd you know, we'd, le- we'd left left a few in there, and we were a little bit more aggressive than the other team. So, you know going back to, to your question, I am concerned that you know I don't think that's the way, that's what this club's DNA is about. I don't think that's what we are. You know a team that'll sit in and, and soak things up and try and hit teams on the break. That's not our you know, not in our, you know, historical values, if you like. But, you know, only time will tell. I'm just hoping that, given the right funds, that, that he can... Well, do you think you're dealing with maybe the consequence of a bit of an incoherent transfer policy, different managers, kind of different ideas? And there's there's some players, like you say, that maybe don't fit what Rafa wants to do and he's suffering from that? Any manager would, would have struggled with this group of players. Mm. Um, like you say, there's such an imbalance in there in terms of physicality, in terms of capabilities and um, positions you know that there's, there's a lack of depth in the squad there's a lack of quality in the squad you know, we've got players who are not even taking part in match day squads for bizarre reasons which we can't go into but um it's 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 a bizarre situation and we needed an experienced manager to be able to deal with that and, and to be able to navigate his way through it it's going to take him a few windows and i just hope i hope that he gets time to, to do that because you know any any more Dismissals and changes in managers and stuff like that. It, it's not gonna. It's not gonna save the club well. At Anfield, though, I mean, it's the party football's back, isn't it? He's kind of seems to me Jurgen Klopp's kind of gone for where you were two years ago, where it's just like you know what, we're just gonna absolutely blitz people. I like a lot of people. The Arsenal game a couple of weeks ago is absolutely cracking up watching Mane and Salah and Jota kind of have fun with that Arsenal back four. What have you made of, of Liverpool, particularly from an attacking point of view? Yeah, absolutely brilliant going forward and, and scoring all the goals in the world. And Mo Salah's been brilliant, Trent's on form, all the front three are scoring. Uh, Bobby, when he's been fit, scoring as well. Um, and, and yeah, absolutely brilliant going that way. 
little bit soft at times going the other way. Um, and you mentioned the Arsenal game. The thing I liked about about Ars- the Arsenal game was we were a bit more steely. I thought in that game, mm. um, we put we put more physical challenges in. We, we we fouled the opposition a little bit more. And you know, Klopp Klopp will never talk about when when it's put to him about the dark arts of the game, which do exist, of course. Yeah. He will he will always play it down and say that's not our philosophy, that's not something we do. But he did he did talk about the side being a little bit more physical and they were against Arsenal. So I, I think that's possibly um something that they're putting right there because they've been a little bit soft with some of the points that they've given away. Mm-hmm. Obviously, um got beat by West Ham, but there was a string of draws there as well that have that have cost us a little bit of of pace in the title race, if you like. Do you feel like the Premier League there's kind of been a bit of a it's condensed a little bit in terms of the quality. I feel like the, the bottom half is now a little bit better than it was and people can take points off each other and maybe Liverpool are kind of dealing with that. City and Liverpool aren't the outstanding best teams anymore because everybody else got a little bit better too. Yeah, and, you know, Chelsea are obviously a good side. I think sides like Brighton, like, you know, I, I was at the Brighton game and Brighton were, were, were really good. Mm. You know, a lot, of the, a lot of the analysis I saw post-match was Liverpool have dropped points. And I was a bit like, well, Brighton deserve some credit yes, here. You know, they, they they were really positive. They were on the front foot. They played well. And, you know, they, they're getting better and better season by season, it seems. So I, I think you're right in that. You know, there are sides there that have got a foothold in the league, improved. And, and you know, even Watford doing what they did against Manchester United, you know, plays really well. Um, Watford did for, for Everton as well. <laughs> um, got to get that one in, haven't I? So, you know, there, there, are, there are sides in the league, definitely, that can, that can turn you over. Gary, do you kind of ever watch match today or watch the Liverpool game and think, oh, that's actually, it's, it's pretty nice to watch that? Yeah, you've got to appreciate it. No, you have got to appreciate it. You have. I mean, uh, I've, you know, I grew up in, in the 90s and, and early 2000s. I mean, that, the 90s or late 90s, mid 90s sides, you know, they used to play nice, you know, nice football and all that. But I didn't really enjoy that or appreciate it because it, it was too soft and it was like, you know, they had a lot of players, you know, the Spice Boys and all that in around 95 to 97 where good individual footballers, but... They never really had that togetherness, but you know that the team they've got at the moment, they, you know, they clearly they, they all buy into it. Um, and like you know, the words I used before, aggressive, fast attacking football, they've got that over there. And and there's a lot more industry to what they do, and it's not just the kind of the pretty stuff on the ball. And you know, they've got some talented players in there, unfortunately. So it, it's a, it's a tough one because sometimes as a as a football fan, you know, I've got to appreciate that, particularly when you're going up against the likes of City, which, which they've done for a number of years now, and to be competing with them. Considering the amount of money that, that, or the you know the differences in the finances in terms mm. of what they've spent, net spend as they always go on about, um, there's a there's a massive difference there. But they're still competing, so yeah, it, it's it's a tough one, um, you know. But you know sometimes you'd have got to hold your hands up and go look. They're, they're, they're a good side. Everton are really suffering with injuries as well at the moment. How much of a problem has that been? It's a problem, but. I, I, you know, they, they had massive injuries last year. The bigger problem is is the state of the squad, you know, and, and that. So when you do have three or four injuries, and it's the personnel that we've had that have got injured that, that have been a bigger problem for us. You've had Yeri Mina, who, you know, despite two years ago when he came in really struggling, he's become an integral part of the side. To Corey, Calvert Lewin, three players who, on set plays, are invaluable. I was going to say, you mentioned that physicality, those three examples. The Spanish side, and, and also, you know, we. It's, it's well documented. We conceded more goals than anyone from set plays this year. And, and it's not surprising when you've lost the three biggest players on our side. Um, and it's also impacting on the style of play, which you know you mentioned before. We can't get higher up the pitch and we can't you know, play a more pressing style of football because you know, we're missing players in particular who cover a lot of ground on that pitch. So the injuries to the personnel you know, in particular have impacted us more than anything else. But it's, it's, it's more a symptom of how thin that squad is and, and it's you know it's it's uh, it's emphasized that really recently what position would you look to buy in in january <sighs> um in terms of instant impact and, and having a more of an impact on the games i'd probably try and get another box to box midfielder and um, the other players we've got at the moment on our bench or in around the squad andre gomez tom davies gabaman who, who's okay, he's I don't even know, know what he is now. He's been injured for that long that he, he he's just he's like jelly. So we we do I think if we had another midfielder who could play either alongside Alan and Zakore, I was saying to Gareth off air and we could we could have a strong three that got about the pitch, which which they've had for a number of years and they've maybe lost a little bit without Wine Aldum. I think another midfielder of that ilk who, who, who could match that level of physicality that Alan and Zakore bring would make a big difference week in, week out to the way we play. 
And Gareth, what about you? I mean, African Cup of Nations on the horizon, obviously, yeah. that's going to mean Salah and Mane out for a little bit. I mean, any team is going to miss those two. Do you think Klopp will look to strengthen in January? Don't know. Uh, I think I think January always seems more difficult than the summer in terms of being able to recruit because, you know, a, a lot of sides don't want to let anyone go. Uh, you know, they're tied down. They've already played in the Champions League, whatever it might be. Um, I think it's no secret that they did have a bit of a look for another midfielder. They did have a bit of a look for someone else up front. Um, what would be good if they are planning on doing something is that it's not left to the back end of the transfer window. I think that was the mistake last time around that the world could see that we needed something doing at centre-half. And I think it was to everyone's frustration involved at Liverpool that it took to the very end of the window to do something about that. And then it felt a little bit like they were running around little grabbing stuff off the shelves rather than <laughs> a, a, having any real plan. So hopefully there's a real plan this time. And and, and if there are targets, um, and there are plenty of names linked as there always are, but if there are targets, I'd like them to be making the move early and doing something about it. Because as you say, you know, we are going to be looking a little bit short. Mm. And, and it's still dead up in the air about AFCON, isn't it? About, you know, we, there was even rumours it wouldn't take place. Yeah. Now, we don't know how far certain teams will progress and when, when, the, play, when the players even have to go. Uh, there's been different rumours around that. So we'll see how, how many games they actually miss, but there's no doubt about it. As you say, you know, you take those two out the side. It's a big, big miss. That'd be typical, by the way, if the African Cup of Nations got cancelled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's classic. <laughs> you couldn't write it. You can see the blue misery <laughs> here, can't you? Can't you? Write it. No, Everything I'm, goes I'm, right for them. I'm a Spurs fan. Grew up with that Arsenal team, the Invincibles, and everything. Yeah. I think there's a lot yeah. of like, there's something in common between Tottenham and Everton fans. It is, it is definitely yeah. <laughs> the inability to get over the line off Tottenham as well. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alex Oxlade Chamberlain back as well. So you mentioned one album and kind of how much you missed him. Mm -hmm. Oxlade Chamberlain, I think a lot of people, I still kind of want to see him on match today. I think, oh, yeah, like he's a good player, isn't he? Like having him back and looking, fingers crossed, fit. How how good is that? Yeah, massive. I mean, you know, for me, the, the jury's still a little bit out on him in terms of the level he can reach and how often he can reach it. Um, because, you know, earlier on in his Liverpool career, he was fantastic. He got a really bad injury, of course, against yeah. against Roma, and then it took him a long, long time to get back from that. Then he had another little setback as well. Um, for me, earlier on in, in this season, he wasn't taking his chances, to be honest with you. We played Norwich in the League Cup and he got a start there and didn't really impress. Um, I think against Brighton, the game I mentioned earlier, I think he was one of the ones that Klopp was pointing the finger at him and Curtis about, you know, they, they didn't particularly perform well in that game. Since then, you know, he's, he's played well against Atletico Madrid, he played well against Arsenal. So, fingers crossed, yeah, that he can reach the level. We know he's capable. And look, there's some jeopardy there for him right now in terms of his deal at Liverpool. So yeah. if he doesn't do it this season, you know, I, I would suggest that he's probably going to move on. So he's got that there as well. And you can see frustrations on the pitch against Brighton. You know, I think Henderson, it was, was barking at him a little bit. And he was giving some back. And I, I didn't particularly think that was a positive thing at the time. But to be fair, since then, he's, as I say, strung together a couple of decent performances. So, yeah, a, a fit Oxlade-Chamberlain is definitely a good thing for Liverpool. Could be a good thing for England as well. Who knows? Um, so, Gary, let's take a trip down memory lane. So, you mentioned there have been some derbies that obviously Everton had the better of. Yeah. What are your favourite derby memories? Ooh, um, probably, ironically, even though we haven't won that many <coughs> at Anfield, I'd probably point to the, the wins at Anfield. So... I was thinking back to, to one of my first, I think it was my first actual visit to Anfield, and Andre Kincelskis got two in a 2-0 in a win. It, the, the good thing about that day, and you know, it, it's, it obviously speaks to the, the whole friendly derby thing, I went with a friend of mine, his dad, and sat in the cop, um, and Andre Kincelskis hadn't really turned up at that point for us, and I, I don't think many knew you know, where he was going to fit in, but he obviously did that day, got two, but you know, being in the derby alongside two reds in a, in a cop, which actually... I think there must have been about 500 blues in there. When I, you know, when I jumped up, I wasn't the only one. You celebrated? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, a absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's only because I had, you know, my mates and his dad's either side of me. I knew my dad's mates would look after uh, Sorry, my mates' dad's would look after me. But, um, yeah, and then I went back in 99 when, when Kevin Campbell scored, the, the only one in, in a 1-0 victory. And I was back row with the cop in that one as well. Got a, got a ticket with, uh, with my mate who, who was a red. Um, went down after school and got a ticket there. So... Yeah, I, I remember them fondly. The one good one was was um, Andy Johnson. Um, a 3-0 win, was it 2003, 2004-ish? The David um, Moyes, is it? David yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that, was, an, um, that was a memorable one. Two, two from Andy Johnson, a 3-0 win. And so yeah, there, there, was, there have been a few down there. There have been a few, few down the years. But 
Um, I'd say the Anfield ones probably stick out to me because yeah, early doors and and again wins where like we were up against it. I think at the time. Yeah. I like that Everton team. Zinedine the Kilban. <laughs> you know, he loved a six foot winger, David Moyes. He used to play Steve Watson on one side, Kill Man on the other. I think even Carsley had a go on the wing. He loved a six foot winger. Um, just play like diagonal balls into a winger. It was like, like a rugby team, to be honest. It's quite a tough ball team as well, wasn't it? Because it was Carsley, Graveson, yeah. Andy Johnson. Yeah. Little Osman was just trying to get in there, get in, get in amongst it. But yeah, it, it was. It, look, it was, it was all about effectiveness. And, you know, we talk about. You know, the style, your style of play being dictated by your resources and what you've got available, yeah. that's exactly what it was for Moisey. That 4-5-1 was bred from the fact that we could never afford more than one striker. Yeah. And, and if we did, that striker always had to be a certain profile and the other players just had to kind of, you know, we just used to put nine players behind the ball. Um, yeah, it was, um, you know, I, people talk a lot about Moyes and his limitations, obviously showing again the type yeah. of manager he can be at West Ham. Um, but, you know, I've got all the respect in the world for what he's done for us, and particularly in those days, you speak about you know the players you mentioned in there, and I've just mentioned, would struggle to get in most of them Premier League sides, never mind be yeah. successful. So, yeah, good, good, good times. Uh, Gareth, you must like David Moyes as well because he went in and sabotaged Man United. So I mean, yeah. that's nice of him. <laughs> I, I mean, he did just pieces with West Ham, though, so I'm not the, not the biggest fan. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, in terms of what he was when he was at Everton, I mean, he, the one thing that was good for me was that. He never enjoyed any success at Anfield, oh. um, so you know that was always the good thing. Obviously, that's now kind of being put to the sword with with the fact that they won in February, but there was no fans there. So, 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 so you didn't win the league either, did you? Well, in that case. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, we, yeah, we, I'll let you have that one if you let us have that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, in, in terms of my favourite moments, I, I, I'm going to go back even further and say that um, 1986 FA Cup final because. Uh. That was tremendous for me as a young kid because Everton actually played much better than Liverpool, to be honest with you. You know, first half to go with the, the one nil up. Um I'm I'm, you know, in in tears nearly thinking of the idea of getting beat by Everton in a cup final and then we turn it around, we win three one. Um Rushy gets a couple. And and you know, there's a there's a goal there, a famous goal, which I always still think about now, which is, you know, it, it knocks the camera over in the corner of the net when it goes in. <laughs> And I remember we, we, we went out on the street sort of recreating that almost straight away as kids. And so, you know, we, it was the old jumpers for goalposts, but there was a little can of Coke in the corner. And it was like, you know, when you got on one-on-one on one with the keeper, if you, if you beat the keeper, but also knocked the can of Coke over, you were like, you'd, you'd wheel away, giving it rushy. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's one of my favourite goals, favourite moments against the Blues. I think the other one as well, got to mention, is um, the last win at, at, at Goodison Park. Um, the only win at Goodison Park under Jurgen Klopp when Sadio Mane scored in the 94th <laughs> minute. Um, I was I was there for that, and you know I was right on the divide. I'd been getting loads of stick and giving loads of stick the other way from Blues all the way through the game, and you know it was almost last kick of the game, wasn't it? So to win to win a game in that fashion at their ground as well, it doesn't get much better than that. I like that you uh, you mentioned recreating goals and stuff. There's, do you remember the goal that Stephen Gerrard scored against West Ham in the oh, FA Cup final? Yeah. So when he hits it in the commentary, he goes, Gerard! Like still when I play five aside with my mates, if somebody hits a half volley, yeah, yeah. then someone will go, Gerard! <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Um, right, so I'm glad you mentioned Ian Rush. Let's talk about the best Merseyside Derby players of all time. Gary, who, who springs to mind for you? I mean, obviously when you ask that question, and if you, if you were to ask a, of a fan who was 150 years old, you, you might say, you know, <laughs> Dixie Dean and, 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 and Alex Young and all that, because they're, you know, from a goals perspective and, and you know, over the years, they would be the ones in the record books. But for me, it's, you know, closer, closer to home and closer to, to my generation. You're talking Graham Sharp, you know, the goal he scored at Anfield, what, what a goal. And he played his part in some, in a, in a fantastic Everton team and some great wins as well. Um, Tim Cale, again, another menace yeah. for them. Always, always got on the end of things. Exactly the type of player you want in a derby. Big Dunk, you know, I've got to go with Big Dunk for me because in, in terms of like... Just in case he's watching well, yeah, there's, there's that, there is, there is that, there is that, but um, yeah, he's just one of them players where, and, and, and you know, this would be a criticism, but also, you know, his, his, his best compliment that he always turned up against Liverpool, he always turned up against Man United as well, you know, we go missing for another 20 odd games, people forget them, but um, you know, whenever, you know whether, he was, whether he was coming on the pitch with two knee straps on and a neck brace and everything, he would always be 110% ready for that derby, and no matter what Liverpool team you come up against, however good they were, 
if Duncan was on the pitch, we always had a chance of winning or, or causing them problems. Um, so, yeah, for, for my generation, in terms of like, the games that I can remember fondly, um, I'll go with Duncan. Yeah. And just a little side note, actually, what's it like having him part of the coaching setup for fans? It, it, it has its positives, as you said before. He's hard as nails and he'll intimidate most people on the other dugout. But um, I'm one of them now who's starting to think, well, is he the common thread here with all these managers who have come and gone? I wouldn't say this to his face either. <laughs> um, but no, look, it, it's good to have a, a proper Evertonian because he's a proper Evertonian, whether he was, you know, wasn't born and bred, obviously, in Liverpool, but he's as much an Evertonian as most of the fans are in, in the terraces. Um, when he got the when he got that little goal was great. Oh, listen, as well, it wasn't was it? great. When like, he had Howard's watch on and all. Oh, that. Mate, even was... even me as a red, I was like that that that's tremendous. That's, that's to be fair, yeah. do you know what I mean? That is class. That that is class. And, and you're right. You know, he, he stepped up at a time then where you know the writing was on the wall and whatever, and and he he give us. I just I just kind of wish that that influence in terms of that passion that he brought to that side for those three game, few games could be replicated over a longer period of time and you know you get the new manager bounce anyway mm. and that was an that was an extraordinary case of the, of the new manager bounce um, and like you said there was a lot of nostalgia involved and again I'm not sure if if the if, if the listeners or viewers you know know what Gareth's talking about there he was wearing uh, Howard Kendall's yeah, watch yeah. so you know Howard's, Howard's wife had passed it on and said look Howard would want you to wear this watch and he, you know he wore it alongside his own watch and he had two watches on but um, yeah, you know, it brings, you know, makes the hair stand on end talking about it now. So on a derby day, you'd like to think that, you know, Benitez is going to allow him to get into the players and, and let them know what that derby, you know, what the, impo the importance of the derby is to the fans. Um, so you've always got that assurance that you'd like to think that the players aren't going to get away with much. Um, and Dominic Calvert-Lewin as well said that he's been a big influence and kind of improving his game. You can see that. Yeah. You can see that. Credit to him. And, and that's where, you know... That's where the value could be for people like Ferguson, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, before everyone jumps on me, and I'm not saying he shouldn't be at the club, but I think there's there's ways that the club can use him, and certainly that's a very good example. Yeah. You know, Dominic's led the line better and better every year, and I'm sure that's no, um, it's no coincidence that he spent a lot of time with, with Duncan Ferguson because after when he first came onto the scene, uh, Dominic, he was, he was a, you know, he led, he, he ran the channels very well, but you know. I think Ancelotti made him into more of a, you know, playing in between the post type centre forward. And since he's, you know, got into that position, he certainly looks a lot more like Duncan Ferguson. You know, he's he's upsetting centre backs. He's doing the ugly work. You know, he's he's leaving leaving what you know. He's talking with the dark arts. That was something that Calvert Lewin never looked like he had in him. But he, he does look like he's got that edge to him now. So yeah, credit. And and if you can continue, and if you can have any influence on him, um, and that leads to him getting more derby goals, then. It'd be well worth it. <laughs> and Gareth as well, favourite players from Merseyside derbies in the past. I mean, it's a huge pick from for you. Yeah, I've got to start with Rushy. Mentioned Rushy before, and obviously, I think he gets he's got twenty five. I think against mm. uh, Everton going, in, yeah. in, in in the Liverpool shirt, and obviously, yeah, two in the eighty six cup final, two in the eighty nine cup final. He gets four at Goodison Park in the 5-0 and 82, which we're still singing about now, and why not? Um, and I think as well, you might remember this, sorry mate, sorry, but didn't he score for Newcastle against He did, well? he did. There's a, there's a good story about that as well. Um, can't remember who the centre-back was on, on the day. It was Michael Ball. It was Michael Ball, yeah. Michael Ball was playing centre-back at the time. And, and Rushy basically distracted him, you know, kind of, oh yeah, nice boots and all that. And literally got him looking at his boots and he's off his shoulder to score. <laughs> So literally the oldest trick in the book. I'm fairly sure it was Michael Ball. If it wasn't, it was a very young centre back. Do you know what I mean? Where Russia probably lost not only one yard, he probably lost ten yards yeah. apiece. But he's yeah, still obviously got that nose to strike career, it. Yeah, yeah he's got that classic. I, I think I think the thing as well about that is, I mean, everyone know you know Russia's the, the record goal scorer for Liverpool. But not only did he enjoy you know scoring all those goals against Everton, but I think it's always worth saying that. A lot of them against Neville Southall, and for me, he's yeah, one of the best goalkeepers nice. I've ever seen. So you know, so that that's another notch up as well. To, to, to like say, well, because some of the saves Southall made in derbies were unbelievable, and, and in general were unbelievable. So so have that record against him as well. That side as well. Some yeah. of the Everton sides he played against were some of the best so, we've ever had. So yeah, you've got to, you've got to start with him. Um, I think a little nod, obviously, to to Divock Origi, who's <laughs> managed to get five in in, in derbies, and uh, he hasn't got a, he hasn't got that many against oh, anyone else. Yeah. Um, I think there's a man in world football who scores more important goals than Divock Origi. He's just a mad, he's a mad <laughs> he's player, isn't he? He's an absolutely mad player. No one can work him out. 
but we sort of we love having him round. I mean, we, we always joke on the Anfield app that you know you, you're probably going to have to give him some kind of statue when he leaves. <laughs> uh, he, he's definitely not one of the best players we've ever had, but he, he's, he's the epitome of of cult hero. Dirk Cout is a bit like that as well. Dirk Cout is a bit like that as well. Did you hate him? I hated Dirk Cout. <laughs> yeah, <he was> horrible, <laughs> horrible player. But yeah, always one of them players who just just get on the end or something. Yeah. And, and I, he was crap as well, wasn't he? Do you know what I mean? He was He's the sort of guy at five aside that just works so hard and never gets tired. So I'll give it a rest, mate. Yeah, busy, <laughs> I, I busy, think, I, dead I think, busy. Yeah. I think, like an on, you know, just to, to, to put a little bit of needle as well. Uh, I think an honourable mention in terms of goals in derbies, two own goals because you got Rushy with twenty five. Mm. I think joint second in, in in the derby for Liverpool. You got Gerrard's got ten, but there's been ten own goals from Evertonians. <laughs> the the great at sticking in their own Class. net in derby. Proper Everton, that yeah. <laughs> <Proper> Everton. <laughs> um, let's talk about the new stadium. Yeah. Um, it's obviously What's happening? There? Is, it, is it still happening? It's happening, yeah. It's, it's happening. happening. It, you know, we, we've had a lot of false storms when it's come to new stadiums. So have they, by the way. <laughs> but uh, no, we've had, we've had a couple, though. There was, you know, the King's Dock was the most famous one, and there was one apparently being built in, in up in Kirby. But yeah, this, one, this one's actually happening. The, the, you know, the, they do updates all the time, Evan. It's always after we get beat as well, by the way. As soon as we got beat, let's get a stadium update out there. Yeah, don't worry the about that. Things will get yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. <laughs> So I think that they've got a quite a big task at the moment to filling up the dock, as in like where the stadium's going to be built. There's water at the moment. It's going to be right down on the docks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're, they're actually sucking all the water out and filling it up with sand, so obviously create a base for the stadium to to, to sit on. So uh, I'm sure you know all the stuff that's going on with um, you know global warming and whatever that that our stadium will get flooded as soon as it's built. That, that'd be typical. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you know I'm led to believe it's definitely getting built this time. So. Um, I just hope we're still in the Premier League when it's by the time it's there and hopefully it hasn't been flooded by then. It's a couple of years away, is it? Yeah, I think they're saying 20, 23, 24, okay. start of that season. So yeah, it's still a few years away. We've got to, we've got to get, a, get rid of a, a bit of dead wood. Some of them players aren't fit to walk, walk into a new stadium for us. So. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, 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 look, it's exciting. It's, it's, it's you know, something the club has needed for a long time. Um, as much as Goodison, you know, it's been been since the 60s or the 70s that Goodison was an actual top stadium let's be honest it was you know at, the, at that time in the 60s around the World Cup it was you know one of the best stadiums well, it was probably the best stadium in English football so it's been a long time coming and, and there wasn't a lot that the club could do with it it'll be a sad day as well though you know it's a, it's a proper traditional yeah. English ground and there's not many of them about now you know Tottenham themselves have got a you know fantastic stadium Arsenal City but you know you, you list all them clubs and you know, they are all the clubs at the right end of the league. So, you know, if we're, if we're going to have any ambitions of starting to compete at, at that at that level, you know, the stadium's got to match it as well. Yeah, you do miss it though, like it's because it's, it's it's proper old football ground, like you say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's part of progress, of course. Mm-hmm. Now, I've got a question for you in particular, Gareth. Right. So, which so this this is this is not my question, by the way. And I think I already know the answer. Which team would you have? Would you have Benitez's Liverpool team? that won the Champions League in 2005, or would you have this Klopp side? Now, there's definitely a right answer, because we're about Jimmy Traore. Well, well, exactly. I mean, look, look, look when, we win, when, when we win the Champions League, the reason that it's it, it's the miracle of Istanbul is not only what happens in the match, but the fact that we're in the final in the first place, yeah, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's that, a little bit disparaging on some of the, the talent that's in that side. Obviously, you've got Gerrard, you've got Carragher, you've got Alonso and players like that. Um, but equally, yeah, you know, we you had Biscam pulling out performances that no one had seen him do before. Yeah, you know, yeah. Triori involved as well, who you mentioned. <laughs> so, well, yeah, obviously the the team under Klopp, you know, ninety seven points in the Premier League, ninety nine points in the Premier League, wins the Premier League, wins the European Cup, um, wins the Club World Cup, all of that kind of stuff. So it, it, it's got to be the Klopp side. But you know, I'm very very fond of the Benitez side uh, for for obvious reasons as well, and they had a good go at. Trying to win the league as well, you know, they yeah, got 80, hard, 86 isn't. points. Um, I think United won it on 90 in the end. We, we, we drew too many games that season, I think we drew 11. Only got beat twice though, I think we were the top scorers in the league that season as well. So, you know, there were, there were good times under Benitez and, you know, obviously you talked before about how strange it is to see him in, in, the, in the, the dugout at Everton and it's strange for us as well. Mm. And, and some people are taking it badly and some people aren't. For, for me, like, to go back to that question before, it made sense for him to go and take the job. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think people were queuing up for him. I think um, he's a great manager, and you know he, 
if you want a club turning around, he's a, he's a good fella to get in there, tap into that knowledge in his brain. But it, it is strange, there's no two ways about it. I think, I think what we're all dreaming of is we want to go to Goodison on the 1st of December. We want to win and win well. And we want there to be a point in the game where we know Everton aren't coming back into it and we, we can, can sing, sing his name. We can sing his name. That, that, that'll kill us, that'll kill us. Like, you know, I've got it, got it saying, the feelings are mixed and the feelings are mixed at Goodison as well mm. in terms of some fans. I've had the knives out since day one, sharpening them to say, you know, get rid of him. He's, you know, he's, he's a red and he'll always be a red. And then the sections like me where they're going, look, you know, more of a pragmatist. He's the right man. He's the right man for the job. Yeah. But don't get me wrong, every section of the support will just have the reds in the hands or will be out the stadium the minute that they start singing his name. If, if it gets to that point, then that'll be a dark, dark be moment. Spicy, they'll be for oh, that, yeah. that'll be a That'll be a dark, dark point in my, you know, Life. Yeah, in my life, yeah, yeah. It's dramatic <laughs> in my life, yeah. I won't lie, yeah. It's a good job my kids aren't quite old enough to really see me at that point if it happens, because, yeah, I'll be unconsolable. <laughs> yeah, why is Danny so upset? You'll know yeah. why. <laughs> yeah. So, Gareth, Jurgen Klopp, though, obviously, that, I mean, few managers have revolutionised a team in the way that he does, has in the last few years. How long do you reckon he's going to be there? And is he keeping the seat warm for Steven Gerrard? We'll see. Um, I mean, look, he, he keeps saying that he, he definitely wants to pack in, that he definitely wants to go. And, you know, we've had loads of debates on the Anfield app about what, what happens next. And people are saying, well, why are you already talking about it? And it's, it's because we're worried. Yeah. We don't want him to go because, as you say, he's been absolutely brilliant what he's done for Liverpool. I think when he came in, there was a lot of us saying to each other, this man doesn't turn his round and we don't win the league under him. We're probably never going to do it. You know, we waited 30 years for it to happen. Uh, and he, he was the man to finally do it. So he's been huge. Um, in, in terms of Stevie, um, we'll see, I think. I mean, I'd love it. I'm, I'm a romantic about football, yeah. and Stevie's from my neck of the woods and, and all that. So I'd absolutely love to see him as, as Liverpool manager. But I think he's got to deserve the role, and he's got to show that you know he's done enough in football to deserve the role. I think you know, the people who run the club will be more pragmatists about it. They'll look at who's the best manager in world football at that, at that time and try and go and get him. If Stevie's up there and in the run, and then you know, fair play to him. But you know, there's there's plenty of backers as well for for the likes of Pep Linders, who's you know he, he's under he's under Klopp's wing, but but he's known to be you know very clued up, very knowledgeable about, about the, the game. Coach, is it? Is no, no, he's, he, he, he's, he's, he's you know he's the number two essentially, and oh, okay. he, he he takes you know he takes the press conferences sometimes for yeah, like yeah, League yeah, Cup yeah. and stuff like that, so you can see you get you get to see a little bit of him there and. There's no doubt about it, he's a very knowledgeable fellow. And I, I kind of wonder, I know we've, we've gone down joint manager role before, I'm not for a minute saying that, mm. but I wonder, some, you know, it, it feels like a team under Klopp, it really does in terms of not just the actual team, but the, the coaching team. Mm. And I wonder, is there a place for Gerrard and Linders maybe? You know, like Linda stays number two and, and he takes a bit of clop into it. Like a technical, it, yeah, technical maybe. director. No, not, not joint, yeah. because we did that. No. Yeah, the Roy Evans. Julio, Roy Evans. Really Let's not go there again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The players not knowing who to call boss is not a good thing. Yeah, I mean it's interesting though that you see like, players like Steven Gerrard kind of come back into management. He's done a good job as well at Rangers. You know, there's Villa. Are there any kind of former Everton players that you would love to see take the helm? I mean, we mentioned Duncan before, and as much as it I may mean, seems a bit negative from me, I think the issue for me with Duncan, and you know, it's a, it's a perfect segue from the Gerrard one is. He hasn't done it himself, you know. Yeah, I think he, yeah. for me, he needs to go and earn his stripes elsewhere. And you know, we've got all all the respect in the world for him to, for being loyal to the club, or he might perceive him, you know, being loyal. But if he used to go and spread his wings and go out and you know, go and work in League Two, go and work in League One, take a job in the Championship, whatever that may be, then he put himself right in the shot window. You know, you you look at people like you know Wayne Rooney, although he you know he made that move to Man United. It was there was a you know bigger story behind that, and we now understand as fans why that happens. Mm. So you know people like him again. If you're going to be a, a romantic about it, would be nice. Tim Cale is always a man who I think has got the the credentials. He's in, you know he's doing his his badges at the moment. Whoever it is, though, you know going back to my first point, I would like to see them in it. Like Gareth just said, then you know they, they don't just want Steven to walk in and sit in the hot seat and go yeah just because he's a, a Liverpool legend. You know they've been they've been there before as well. It doesn't all, it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, unless you, you know the right man for the job on every level. So, whoever it is, you know whether it's Duncan, whether it's Tim Cale, whether it's even Wayne Rooney, and I'm, you know Wayne's on the right track. He's, he's got an incredibly difficult job on his hands at the moment, yeah, but ridiculous. he's doing it well. He's <laughs> yeah. doing it well. I mean, he's even surprising me. I, I honestly thought it was a little bit too early for him, 
and you know, as I even thought he'd have walked out probably a few months ago once all the the, um, the talk of the, the the points deductions came up. But you know, he's held his own and he's still picking up results with with a squad that he's just pulled together. And I can't help but think that he has learned a lot from playing under David Moyes and, and what he managed to do in that team as well. Yeah, he's the way he's built. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> he can do though, well, can't he? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, for me, whoever it is, it'd be great to have that connection with the manager because we haven't had that. We haven't had that for a while. Um, not not really since I'd probably say Joe Royal. We had that connection yes. with the manager, and so even David Moyes, you know, obviously David Moyes d- done a cracking job, and, and you know he coined the whole people's club phrase, and, and he'll always have respect from the fans for that. But he wasn't Everton through and through. Do you know he wasn't? He, yeah. he just inherited that, and he, he created his own legacy. So I'd like that one day, but it needs to be the right man. Gareth, 1st of December, score prediction. Look, it's, it's been a tough place to go for, for Liverpool uh, for a while now, including under the clock. We've only won there once under the clock, uh, which was the Sadio Mane game, which I mentioned before. There's been a lot of draws, a lot of nil-nils. Um, I don't think Everton could claim to have been on the same level as Liverpool for, for some time now. I don't think, you know, that, I think that's factual. Hmm. But, you know, for, that, for this game, as we always know, they'll be up for it. The fans are back in now as well. Uh, it's under the lights, all of that kind yeah. of stuff. So it feels like it, you know, the old lady will be rocking and all that. Um, so I, I, Klopp's been a bit weird, I think, about derbies, particularly away. Like it almost feels he's never said it, but it almost feels like he's like, I'll take a point. And obviously, me as a fan, I'm like, I want you to go there. Go I want the you throat. to smash them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he, 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 he's not really done that. But you mentioned before about the style this season, and I mentioned before about the fact that we've looked a little bit shaky at the back. Some question marks about the midfield and all that kind of stuff. It may actually be to Liverpool's advantage this time to go for it and, and, and make the most of the attack and talent and, and put it on Everton's toes. So hopefully that happens, and hopefully that's what we see. I think I think massively when we're trying to make a score prediction as well, it will depend on what Everton we're facing. I mean, you know, the Everton that I, I've watched this weekend with loads of players missing. I'm, I'm confident we beat them. Um, the Everton with all their best players back in with Calvert Lewin back up front and all the rest of it might cause us a little bit more of a problem. Saying it's the strongest version for the sake of argument, I will I will hope and pray that we beat them three one. Right, okay. And that's the strongest ever. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, three one. I'm gonna be well, you've always got to be confident of the derby, surely. Three one. Because we're we're going for it this year, that's that's why. Gary? Yeah, I mean, all the reasons Gareth just gave at the start then, all those little things, you know, Benitez, Benitez and again, under the lights, the fans being back, I, I, you know, I think we will be back to our, you know, our full strength in that game and I think our full strength side causes them problems for the reasons, again, that Gareth just indicated the are shaky at the back, Van Dijk still doesn't look, you know, and understandably still doesn't look the player he was yet, you know, that midfield's missing Wijnaldum massively, I think, you know, I think if you put Alan Zakori against Fabinho and, and, and Henderson. I don't think there's a lot in it, honestly speaking, and, and I haven't been able to say that for a while. But I do think that the game plan there will be to, to get the ball wide and get crosses into the box and get, you know, Richarlison and, and Calvert Lewin amongst those two centre backs. I think we do that. I, I can certainly see us getting a couple on, on the scoreboard. And for the sake of the, for the show, I'm going to go 2 1 Evan. <laughs> there we go. And just finally, it's getting to that time of year. Gareth, what a Liverpool fan for Christmas? To be top of the league again, I think. Um, I, I think you know, there's there's still a weird thing about Liverpool this season where I think we're, we're still all not sure what, what 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 we've got and where we're going, and what's going to happen. And not all of that is down to Liverpool, of course. I mean, you know, Chelsea are, are top as we speak. Um, I would say, I would argue they've been fortunate, certainly in that Brentford game. Um, can they stay there? I'd like them not to stay there. I obviously much prefer when we're actually top again because it just sort of calms the noise. There's so much noise around football these days, social media, etc. The way that the, the mainstream media is as well. You know, like since when did a draw become a crisis? And yet apparently it is these days. So I'd love Liverpool to get on a little run and hopefully be top for Christmas. That'll do me nicely. Gary, what a toppy one for Christmas. A derby win. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a... Uh, yeah, you know, more than anything else, we need all our players back fit. And, a bit uh, sulky that because I know, I know they had issues with injuries last year and I took the mick out of them saying oh it's injuries <laughs> only you get injuries no I, we just need a fully fit squad back and 
you know, and, and, and to string a few wins together. But it, that that derby win would really catapult catapult. You know, it was up up the league literally from a points perspective. But I think that, you know it would give some vindication. I think to to maybe what that team is capable of because I think with all our players fit, I don't think it's a million miles off. Um, so yeah, derby win for a start, and then you know move up the league. There we go. Let's hope Santa Claus is listening. Um, best of luck, lads. Thank you very much, Gary. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Cheers, Gareth. Thanks, mate. Um, and thank you very much for tuning into the Derby Days podcast. Make sure to download the We Love Sport app to book your place to catch Everton versus Liverpool this coming midweek. And all the best sporting action. See you next time. Yeah.